Hi friends, how are you today? I decided to start a new series where I offer you guys some tutorials on nature drawings. And to start the series, we're gonna draw some really cute line art flowers with ink pens. <laughs> Here's what we're really doing today. I love this style because it looks so dramatic and beautiful and delicate at the same time, but also powerful. I don't know. Anyway, check out the description for the list of materials I used in this class and let's get started. All right, so this is not gonna be like your most basic drawing tutorial, but I know you can do this. So let's just jump right into it. We are starting with a daisy. So to start, I like drawing a small circle where the center of the daisy will be and a larger circle around it to mark the size of the petals. And now you can draw the petals like this and to make it realistic, you don't want to make them all look the same. You should try to draw them with different sizes and different shapes and also the distances between each petal should change. You can also draw a few petals behind each other like this and this will help you play with the shading later. We all learned how to draw daisies like this actually, like creating these curved U-shaped lines that are continual. So like when you start one petal and you finish them, you start the next one and then the next one and then the next one. But as you can see, it doesn't look as natural and realistic if that's what you're looking for as if you draw more uneven petals like this. Now, when you're ready, you can outline the petals using a super thin line. I'm using a 003 for like 95% of this class. So whenever I'm using the ink pens, I'm probably using a 003 and I'll let you know if I use a different one. In this step, you can also be a little more careful with your lines and add more details. Like in the tip of each petal, notice that it's shaped like the, the letter M and that will look super beautiful when we start shading. Don't forget to make sure the ink is dry before you erase the pencil marks. I've ruined so many drawings just because I forget that the ink has to dry and I do not recommend that my friends. So just wait like 30 seconds before you use your eraser and then you're good to go. Now we're going to start shading and I'm marking with the pencil a few shadow spots that I want to create in my flower. So like in this case, I'm picturing the light as it's coming from a diagonal angle like this, hitting the flower in this direction. So I'm going to create some shadows on the right side of the flower and I'm going to use this technique that's called hatching, which all you have to do is create these lines like this. It's basically like a quick and controlled movement with your hand. You start with the pen in the darker side of the shadow and then draw like a fast line towards the light, lifting the pen from the paper during this stroke. The more you do this, the faster and more precise you will become. And really learning how to control and, you know, becoming more familiar with your pens is what will help you create this like super beautiful and smooth shadows. All you have to remember is that in general, especially in botanical drawing, the shadows will always come from the center of the flower and the direction of your lines should follow the direction of the petals. Also, the petals that are behind other petals have a projected shadow that you can draw like this. And remember to always start moving from your darkest shadow spots. And once you're warmed up and feeling more confident, you'll be able to draw like the mid-tones and the lighter spots as well. A very important thing for you to keep in mind is that new pens will release more ink, so they're gonna create thicker and like heavier black lines. And the older your pen gets, the smoother and more delicate lines you can create. So I'm using a very old pen. This, this pen that I'm using is like almost dry. And I recommend you save all of your old pens until they're like fully, fully dry. They are so useful for shading. If you don't have an older pen, you can try tilting your pen on an angle and like hatching with the pen on a diagonal angle towards the paper because when you hold the pen like vertically towards the paper it's going to release more ink and when you tilt it to the side it will create like a thinner line as you can see i'm also shading from the tip of each petal towards the middle of them so i'm shading from the center of the flower towards the outside and also from the outside towards inside leaving like the middle part of each petal with a lighter spot on it and I'm using this like M shape that's on the tip of each petal to guide my shading and I'm creating these two long shadows for each petal like this. 
So it creates some sort of depth and it creates a texture for the petal. And again, it's not the same for each petal. Each petal is different. And the more you create variation, the more natural and more like realistic your flower will be. I'm also trying to make the petals that are in the front lighter and the ones that are in the back a little darker. Now, do you remember this random circle that I drew to create this like projected shadow to the right of the petals? We can follow that circle as a guide to add some extra lines from the center to towards the light parts of the petals like this. And I'm just trying to make the areas that are inside of this random circle that I drew a little bit darker. I also use the 01 pen, so a pen with a thicker tip to intensify the shadows that I want to make really dark, which is basically like these little spots that are closer to the center of the flower. Also to do the center part, I'm drawing some super light and delicate circles using my old pen. So you can barely see them. They're supposed to be like super delicate like that. My pen is actually, almost too dry i wish i could see them a little bit better so i'm switching to a different pen that is a little bit newer they will release a little more ink and this will help me create texture but make a light spot in the center so i'm changing how visible each little circle is in this center part of the flower and i'm focusing on creating the shadow more towards the right and yeah i think it creates like a beautiful textured center part for the flower now we're gonna draw some tulips, which are super simple flowers to draw. I'm sure you drew this when you were like a kid because it's one of the easiest ones to draw. And they're basically shaped like this, like a novel shape kind of. And you have a larger petal in the front like this and we'll be able to see a little bit of the petals that are in the back. Again, to create the shadows in the flowers, the rule is to hatch from the center of the flower towards the outside or like the end of the petal. So in this case, since the flower is in, more, in a more like vertical way, kind of looks like a tube, we can hatch from the bottom up. And notice that the lines are not vertical, right? Like it's not exactly following like from the bottom up. They're coming from where the center of the flower should be which is like this small invisible spot in the bottom of the flower itself. And the lines come from the center and then up and out a little bit. So they're not super straight, they're not super vertical, they're a little bit curved like this. And in nature, we rarely see super straight, perfect lines. So a slight curve when you hatch is always welcome. I'm still using my old pen and in this case I'm gonna make the bottom of the flower a little bit darker than the middle of the petals. And I'm also gonna create like a shadow that kind of contours each petal to create some depth. And it's starting to look like a tulip now. I'm also gonna draw some super dark and dramatic shadows inside a flower like this. And I love adding some really dark shadows because they really make the flower kind of like pop from the paper and it really looks more three-dimensional and realistic. I love it. Also to shade the stems, choose a side to be the shadow and in my case I'm choosing the right side. Just hatch following the movement of the stem and creating a shadow on the top part of the stem as if the flower is projecting that shadow on the stem. Just draw your lines in this direction and try to make your shadow part darker than the light part. Always remembering to move from shadow to light because this is how you hatch. And now you have a beautiful tulip, actually two. Our next flower is going to be a lily, which is a tiny bit more challenging, but I know you can do this, so just don't give up on me yet. To start, you can draw the center of the flower and an oval shape to mark the whole flower. And then you can mark these curved lines from the center to mark where the petals will be. The petals are shaped similar to a leaf, like chubbier in the middle, and then they end in like a sharp V shape like this. Again, guys, the petals are not supposed to be perfect. So you can create some like uneven curves like this on the edges of each petal to make your flower a bit more interesting and natural. 
And I also love to create a little fold. So like as if the petal is folded like this, it really makes a difference and really, I don't know, it just makes it more interesting in my opinion. And an important thing for you to think too is that the petals are not flat. They kind of have like a little division or like a little curve in the middle that we can create with the hatching later. But for now, you can just mark them with the pencil like this. It's basically a line in the center of each petal that follows like the movement of the petal. Also, lilies have these little things coming from the center. What is this called? I should have Googled it. Sorry, guys. But um, you just have to create some little curved lines like this and a little oval shape in the top of each one of them. After your outline you're drawing, you can start shading. As you can see, daisies are more flat, more open, and tulips are more like closed, if that makes any sense. Like it's shaped like a, a little tube. And lilies are more of like a mix of both because it starts closed, like similar to the tulip, and then it opens halfway, right? This means we'll have like a darker shadow in the center to create this like perception of depth. And again, the hatching always follows that rule of coming from the center towards the outside. But in this case, we can also make them directed to the outsides of each petal, like this. And you know this division in the middle of, of each petal that we did before with the pencil? These should be left white. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive, but it will make sense really soon. So try to keep these invisible lines completely white and I'll show you what it's gonna look like very soon. Now I'm just intensifying the shadows coming from the center and really just creating that extra drama we all love and are here for. And uh, just notice where I made the shadows darker. So like the center of the flower and the tip of the petals are darker to make it seem like the petals are in the movement of a curve, right? Like they're curved down and really open. Now that we finish our beautiful lily, we are going to practice creating some transparency. So like, you know, when the sun hits a flower and you can see that the petals are a little bit transparent, you can kind of see the petals that are behind other petals. You know, I have no idea the name of this flower, but it's really cute. So I'm just drawing like a simple flower shape, like it's a simple stem and then a few petals coming out of this stem like this. I'm making this stem a little thicker this time because I want to try it out and see what it looks like. And as usual, we are hatching from the center up and out. And to create a sense of depth, you can hatch a little bit like this on the outer parts of the petals as well, like the edges of each petal. And this creates like a huge difference because it creates basically like the texture of the petal. Thank you. 
To create the transparency, you really just have to make it darker where you have two petals on top of each other, like this. Just keep creating lines in the same direction, making it darker where you want your transparency to be. And it's just so weird to explain this in words, but you're watching this, right? Like I'm hoping this is making sense as I'm showing it to you. I don't know. Here, you just know the drill. I'm just intensifying the shadows because why not? Am I right? This is how you create a transparent effect when you draw flowers. Isn't this cool? And to finish this tutorial, we are jumping to a bit of a more challenging flower. It's a sunflower, but why make it easier if we can make it harder? Am I right? So with this sunflower, it's not going to be like your average position of a sunflower. This sunflower is kind of like still opening up or maybe closing down. And we are looking at it from the side. So I know it looks weird right now, but it will make sense really soon. In this flower, I want to show you how to create a difference between colors if you have no colors to work with. So like, since we're working only with black, but we know that flowers are colorful, how do you clearly show that one thing is a different color than another if you're only working with black, right? In this case, as you can imagine, the petals of the sunflower should be probably like yellow and the leaves should be probably like a dark green. So if you think about it, the green is probably darker than the yellow. To create this difference, we need to play with the value scale, which in simple words is like how dark or light a color is, right? Like you change the value of a color or a tone when you add white or black to it. So to make it really easy, we're basically making the leaves darker than the petals, okay? It's supposed to be simple. And we can do this. I'm sure you're starting to understand the position of this flower now. It's like some petals are closed, some are open halfway, and as we see in nature, each petal is different. Different sizes, different shapes, and the hatching follows the same rule. So moving from the center up and out. I ended up making the petals a bit too dark, so I had to make the leaves even darker to create a separation between them, and I do like it. I mean, like the overall, this flower could be a little lighter, like it's it's a bit dramatic and dark, but you know, it's pretty cool. Maybe it's a sunflower dressed up for Halloween, you know. I'm sorry I suck at being funny, guys. I'm just doing my best over here, okay? This is our shy sunflower, everyone. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this class so I can make more videos for you. And just really be honest, let me know what you didn't like so I can improve it. And also tell me what you did like so I can do more of that too. Okay? Okay.
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you had so much fun and you feel super creative and artistic now. Please don't forget to leave a little like. It takes one second and makes my day. Ah! If you learned something today, please consider subscribing to my channel and head down to the description below to get 30 days free on Skillshare to watch all my drawing classes for free. Plus all the other thousands of creative, amazing classes that they offer from other amazing artists. And I guess that's it. I'll see you next week. Bye.